IBF Junior Welterweight Championship between Aaron Pryor of Cincinnati and a native of Canada, Nikki Ferlano. Pryor in the white trunks. This has been Bill Gil Clancy as the return of the Hawk. He has not fought in nine months. Well, let's go. We'll see if he's ring rusty, uh, Vern. You have to remember, though, that Ferlano only had one fight in the past year, so we may be looking at two pretty rusty guys in there. There was a tremendous commotion before the fight when the Ferlano entourage, which, if you can believe this, was larger than that of Aaron Pryor, tried to intimidate the uh, Pryor camp. I don't know that it was successful. And well, it took him a while to clear the ring. It looked like a world war. <laughs> Pryor in the white. Nicky Ferlano from Toronto. He has a record of 37 wins, 8 defeats, and 1 draw in a career as a professional that began in 1976. And, of course, you know the awesome record of Aaron Pryor, defeating Alexis Arguello twice, 26 consecutive knockouts. He's had 34 fights and has yet to taste defeat. Uh, Falano has a reputation as a very good boxer with very fast hands, but he was very confident when he spoke to me. He said, no, he said, I'm going to carry the fight to, to Pryor and make him fight with me. I think that's the wrong thing to do with a puncher of uh, Pryor's caliber. Ferlano also said he wanted the fight in the middle of the ring, and that's where they are right now. And once all the commotion died down, they're at the business at hand, which is boxing each other. Breyer retired, of course, after defeating Arguello for the second time last September. First fight now in nine months. This has been billed, as we said, as the return of the Hawk. Although that retirement of nine months really is not that much of an inactive period for a fighter, I don't think. Well, especially for Pryor, because he was only in the habit of taking a fight about every five months. He only had seven fights in three years. He has uh, absconded the WBA title, or it is no longer his. This is an IBF fight, International Boxing Federation. Oh, -ho! what a left hook! What a left hook! It's from the most awkward position you've ever seen. Only Aaron Pryor could throw a punch like that. Nobody else. He missed the punch. He was off balance. Somehow he managed to spin around and nail Ferlano with that big left hook. Nicky, it was the most unorthodox punch I've ever seen. Nicky Ferlano has never been knocked out in his career. Well, his eyes are glassy right now, Vern. He's wobbly. There's the eight count. Harry Davis, the referee. And you know, Pryor has a reputation. He's one of the best finishers in the business once he gets you hurt. Ferlano desperately hanging on. Well, his, I think he's clearing up a little bit, Vern. If he doesn't get nailed again, he may get through the round. Then he Saved does. by the bell. Vern, I've never seen a punch. That, it must have been some sort of a pivot punch. You'll see Pryor is off balance. He misses the punches, but with that great instinct he has he came back and throw through an unorthodox left hook and it nailed Ferlano right on the chin well it was the left hook from the vicinity of Montreal and it caught Ferlano Ferlano as we said has never been knocked out he's been knocked down before and come back now take a look at it Gil all right let's see what happens here Fryer looks like he's setting him up with the jab there's it was off balance and comes back misses again look look at the position where he throws that left hook from it looks like he's walking away from, Fer from Ferlano and comes back and hits him with the left hook Unbelievable. That's Aaron Pryor. He can do these kind of things. Nobody else can do, make those kind of moves. Talk about unorthodox. That was the second time that Ferlano was down. I think he was more off balance than down from the force of a punch. And he is taking every possible second in the corner. Round number two. It's scheduled for 15. Well, one thing for sure, Ferlano knows now that Pryor can punch. And we said he had, did have a reputation of being a boxer, but he was going to try to fight with Aaron. Now I think he'll change his style. Not that many people gave Ferlano a chance coming in. He sounded confident, but then most fighters do. And he is obviously still a little weary. Boy, you're right on the replay. What a, what a wild left hook that was. Breyer missing with the overhand. Reminded, reminded me of Rocky Marciano. He'd th throw a right hand over your head, miss you by three feet, and the fighter would say, ha, miss me. And then he'd come back with that left hook and knock him dead. This is an outdoor fight in Toronto. First championship fight here since 1973. We are at Varsity Stadium in Toronto, Canada. 
Aaron Pryor said he retired to take care of a multitude of personal problems and told us that he's got them all behind him. But well, I suppose there are cynics who would wonder about that. Orlando certainly is not carrying the fight uh, to Aaron now the way he said he was going to do. He's learned his lesson. Dyer probing. And Falano's style has perceptibly changed. Well, he's getting a little spirit back, Gil. Yeah, good left hook by Falano. There's a good right from Pryor, however. You know, Pr Pryor makes a mistake that it, it, we, nobody knows how he gets away with it. When he punches, he sticks his chin way up in the air and invites you to hit him. And so far, nobody's really been able to hit him to put him out. But it looks so inviting when that chin goes up in the air. There's a decent crowd here in Toronto, and they are decidedly for Mickey Frilano, the native of Toronto. He has fought all but two of his fights in the provinces. He's been to Cleveland twice as a pro, but elsewhere other than that. Oh, good right. That wobbled Aaron a little, Aaron a little bit, Vern. Right on the button. You know, in the amateurs, Falano beat Tommy Hearns. Not a bad win. Now he's really gotten on his uh, on his horse. Nick Ferlano, 26 years of age. Pryor is 28. And we're nearing the end of round number two, and Ferlano has made a comeback. From near oblivion in the first round, he will come back for the third round. But look at Aaron move those hands now. Nothing easy shows how good you are That's why our athletes are out there training hard And I bought Olympic coins Gold and silver Olympic coins To help them up when they're reaching for that star Now you can give the joy and excitement of Olympic gold and silver coins Today's 10-year-olds could be tomorrow's gold medal winners to support future training programs and the summer games, these beautiful commemorative coins are being offered by the U.S. Treasury. They've never been issued before and will never be available again. Support the home team. Buy an Olympic coin and someday it may turn into an Olympic medal. So join the team today. Be part of the dream today. Support the home team all the way home. At many banks, coin dealers find stores, savings and loans, and post offices. Sandy Koufax, Hank Aaron, Bob Feller, Johnny Bench, and Joe DiMaggio, the old-timers baseball classic, next Saturday on CBS Sports. And there's an old-timer by the name of Ernie Banks who can be happy right now because 45 minutes before the start of the Cub game, they have moved into first place. The Philadelphia Phillies were soundly beaten by Houston this afternoon. 13-1 to was the final score, and Joe Necro was the winning pitcher. Now, turning back to the Aaron Pryor nicky Ferlano fight, after a nine-month layoff, Pryor could not finish off Ferlano. Knocked him down twice, as you saw, in the first round. Ferlano, however, came on, and he grew stronger as the contest was wearing on. In fact, they were just about even. Now, we're going to pick up the action again in round 10. So let's join Vern Lundquist and Gil Clancy. We are two-thirds of the way through a Schedule 15 rounder just about. This is the 10th round in Toronto, Canada. Aaron Pryor, the... Return to the Hawk, it has been billed. He retired after defeating Alexis Arguello last September, solved some personal problems, relinquished his WBA championship. This is an IBF junior welterweight title fight with Nick Ferlano of Toronto. And it has been a good fight, Gil Clancy. Yes, uh, Vern, you had asked me earlier if uh, Aaron was showing any ring rust. And uh, I mentioned that, that he looked like the same old Aaron Pryor. And despite the fact that he nailed him with that one big left hook and knocked him down in the first round, he does not look the, like the Pryor of old because he just doesn't seem to have the snap and the power in his punches. He has thrown hundreds of punches, but it, it just didn't, doesn't seem to have any effect on Falano. He's not swelling up. He's not bleeding from anywhere. Uh, Aaron is, has just not been putting any snap in his punches at all. Nick there, there's th another combination of three, four, five punches. Uh, when Pryor hit them like that previously, they'd go. 
And Polano, we thought, was going to go in the first round. Oh. That's a good overhand oh, right again. There's a good punch by Polano. That's what I mean. The solid punches are being landed by Polano, strangely enough. We thought it would be the opposite way. We thought Polano would be the busy guy, and Aaron would nail him with the big punches. It hasn't been that way. In your mind, is that going concern in the prior corner? Oh, if I was in prior's corner, I would be very, very worried. I hometown mean, crowd. Hometown crowd, and the fact that when Falano lands a punch, it's a spectacular punch. Of course, the accumulation of punches have all been by prior. It may be five, six, seven to one. But what kind of punches are they? And how much uh, do the referees value them? Or, and the judges, excuse me, the officials. Tenth round of the scheduled 15 rounder from Varsity Stadium. See, again, there's Falano. He, he missed with that left hook, but it really had something on it. Body shot from Nick Falano. And a good left hook by Falano. He's a young man who was born in Calabria, Italy, and came to this country with his family when he was three years old. Was raised here in Toronto. Got a right from Nick Ferlano, and you can hear the crowd in the background. Ferlano's getting brave now, Vern. And when you get brave, sometimes you leave yourself wide open. Prior landing with some more shots, but the effectiveness questionable because uh, Ferlano not showing too much effect so far. And then he counters with the left hook again. like a snake lying in wait and there he does it again as we near the end of the 10th round it has become a fairly even fight I want a good house paint that lasts a long time resists chipping peeling chalking and cracking goes over paint or stain and doesn't cost over $10 now, get everything you want in house paint in one house paint. New Endurance Plus 2 from Glidden. On sale now for just $9.99. $9.99. What more could you ask for? Glidden Endurance. It's more than a name. It's a promise. Burger King presents the dawn of burgers. In the beginning, it was hard to get a hamburger at all. So when you got one, you made the most of it by cooking over fire. Today, some have forsaken flame and turned to the practice of frying, forgetting the sizzling taste that only comes from flame broiling. But at Burger King, we say, when you've got something as delicious as flame broiling, you stay with it for a long, long time. Next weekend, relive the memories with some of the greatest who ever played at the Old Timers Baseball Classic. Twelve auto racing champions will compete in the second of a series in the International Race of Champions. Coverage of the PGA Tour continues with the final rounds of the Western Open. Live coverage of the first ever Dallas Grand Prix. And on CBS Sports Sunday, junior lightweights Roger Mayweather and Tony Baltazar will collide. Plus the Tour de France and John Madden's journeys all next weekend on CBS Sports. Because of Aaron Pryor's awesome knockout reputation, Nick Ferlano said the thing he most feared from Aaron Pryor was going down for the count early. And he told Gil Clancy and me, if this goes the distance, it's mine. Well, it's five rounds away from going the distance. We are in round number 11. It may be five rounds away from going the distance, but you'd have to give uh, Pryor the, the big edge, in my opinion, on the accumulation of punches that he's thrown and that he has landed. And, and again, we're on the point system, so that first round had to be a 10-7 round for Pryor, and that was an awful lot for Falano to make up. 11th round, Nick Falano and Aaron Pryor. Falano is still holding those hands up high. Pryor had an interesting thing to say about uh, how much he respects Arguello and what this fight would mean. He, I think he, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, Gil, but he said he wanted to take Ferlano out because he didn't want to demean the accomplishments and the efforts of Alexis Arguello. That's correct. He had a lot of respect for Alexis Arguello. And rightly so. Arguello is a great champion and a great gentleman. He has that big left hook and right hand by Ferlano. Pretty good body shot to the chest, too. A left, a short left. It's 
this is a tough, tough fight to score because, again, we're repeating ourselves. Pryor is busy. He's busy snapping those punches. There was a three-punch combination. But when Falano throws him, he's throwing him with bad intentions. Pryor has not, uh, has not noticeably been in difficulty in this fight. And yet there have been numerous right hands and left hooks that Falano has landed with some efficiency. That was about the hardest punch that Pryor threw in the last three or four rounds. It was blocked by Falano, but he did have a lot of snap on that punch. The 11th round of a scheduled 15 round bout. Under the beautiful night skies of Canada. Big combination by Falano. Good short overhand right by Falano. Brian, this is Falano's biggest round, and Pryor is waving to the crowd and saying, no, it doesn't mean a thing, but it does mean a thing because it's scoring points for Falano. There's one of Pryor's moves, but no effect whatsoever. Falano has those hands up there, and he's not getting nailed. Out of that crouch, with those hands high, cobra-like comes that left hook. This is an amazing performance by Nick Falano. And it has now gone 11 rounds. We are near the 11th in Toronto, the end of the 11th. The champions presented by Old Spice after shave and cologne. You want to fight, you want to fight, and then you look, you want to be a champion of the world. This was my greatest, this was, was, this was to be my greatest achievement. It was the greatest night of my life. You know, you're walking on air, really. There's something that I was shooting for, and now I knew that I could take care of my people. I was champion of the world. That was the first thing in my mind, my mother and father. And I took care of them as long as I could. But that was it. With the champion comes money, you know, and uh, I knew everything was going to be all right. All you got to do is smell the coffee, splash on Old Spice. Now you're moving, isn't it nice? Up and at them, don't think twice. Splash on some spice. Nobody sends more guys out there than America's favorite, unmistakably masculine Old Spice. Splash on the feeling. Splash on some spice. And now, to soothe sensitive skin, try Old Spice conditioning aftershave. Perhaps one minute into the first round, Nick Fernando went down as a result of a wild left hook from Aaron Pryor. We thought then the fight might not last the duration of that round. Instead, we begin the 12th round. From Toronto, Vern Lundquist and Gil Clancy, Aaron Pryor, and Nick Fulano having at it. And having at it with some emotion and skill. There was the ring rush showing in Aaron Pryor. He missed those punches by a good country mile. Left hand and right hand, both. I think maybe 40 minutes ago I was going to ask you about possible future opponents for Pryor. I think we better concentrate right here on Nick Fulano. Well, and I know he is now. Round number 12. Breyer tries that. That was an open glove slap from Polano. But we have not seen the sting, Gil, and of course you alluded to it a couple of rounds ago, the power in Pryor's punches. Well, that's right. Again, he has landed so many punches and there was no signs of any marks on Falano whatsoever. So it just seems that Aaron is not really digging and putting any snap into those punches. But they, they are, they, he is throwing an awful lot of punches, but not with the big bomb. Now the counter from Nick Falano. I think Pryor was playing with him a little bit there. He better not play. He's got to set himself and throw some hard punches now, Vern. What causes the effectiveness to be to not be there? He's not, he's, not, the he's not setting. He's, he's letting the punches flow. He's very relaxed. But every once in a while, when you set the guy up, you really got to put that extra snap in there. Let's go, 
That was more of an open glove slap, I think. Didn't have the, the yeah, force well, behind it. It's, it looks good to the judges, right. though, Vern. And it sounds nasty. Left, right, left. Well, they, there you go. Prior through a three-punch combination, but Falano's punches had much more on them and were much more showy. Well, it's scheduled for 15, and we are near the end of 12. From Varsity Stadium in Toronto, Canada, Nick Ferlano and Aaron Pryor. He's taking liberties with Pryor now. One reason why Duracell batteries last so long is because we never stop improving them. In fact, today's Duracell batteries will last up to 20% longer than the ones we made just three years ago. And we'll keep on improving them. Because on that score, we have a one-track mind. Duracell, the copper top battery. When it comes to making them last longer, we never stop. You know, I lease so reliable here from AT&T. It's gone through the Griffith family school of hard knocks and come through with flying colors. Of course, if I ever did have a problem, I'd just call AT&T toll free or take it to one of their phone centers for exchange. Leasing's smart for me. It's smart because no matter what happens, I can always relax. AT&T Consumer Sales and Service. That is 26-year-old Nick Ferlano fighting 28-year-old Aaron Pryor, IBF Junior Welterweight Championship as we begin the 13th round. Aaron came out and started to talk to Ferlano right away. And it, it, it didn't look like he was bidding him the time of day either. Pryor looks angry. Yeah, well, I think he's psyching himself up, uh, Vern. But he now, Ferlano, I tell you, he's a tough street kid. He said, come on, Aaron, let's see how tough you are. Nick Ferlano last fought in April, won a 10-round decision here in Toronto against Trevor Evelyn. The thing, Aaron's trick moves are not working for him. It worked in the first round when he started the walkway and came back with that big hook. But ever since then, anytime he starts that kind of stuff, Ferlano just puts his hands up and ducks, and, and Aaron has not been able to hit him. Have you seen Ferlano fight before? Yes. Was he this good? No, no. He, he, he's done an exceptional job tonight. He, as he told us, it was the opportunity of a lifetime for him, and he was going to take full advantage of it, and he has. Aaron Pryor has never lost 34-0. and zero. And again, he seems to be in command in this fight, but I think we are as surprised at the duration of it as anything because we thought, most folks did, that it would last maybe five rounds. And that Aaron Pryor would take Ferlano out, and indeed in the first round with the knockdown, it looked like it was not going to be that many. And here we are in the middle of the 13th round. Brian, all I can say is if I was in Aaron's corner, I'd be nervous because so many things can happen in a fight. And if you can get a guy out, you should get him out. So it looks to me like Aaron is having a lot of trouble with this Nicky Ferlano. He just can't land the big bomb. There was that ring rust again. He missed by only nine inches that time. Maybe he's zeroing, zeroing in. Maybe he just missed again six inches. That's the left hook out of a counter that has worked for Polano, but doesn't this time. 13th round of a scheduled 15 rounder from Toronto, Canada. Oh, there's that. When Aaron starts to walk away, you have to look out because he comes right back. Again, if I was in Falano's corner, I'd complain about Pryor punching with an open glove, but maybe if you complained, he'd close his fist and knock you out. Nearing the end of the 13th round of a scheduled 15 round fight, Aaron Pryor and Nick Falano. This is CBS.
this Grand Prix on CBS Sports. In 1982, in November in Miami, Aaron Pryor fought Alexis Arguello. That was the last time he was forced to go 14 rounds. He took Arguello out in that round, in that fight. And here against Nick Ferlano, and I'm sure most of you in the States have never heard of this young man, since he has fought only twice in the United States, both of those times in Cleveland. 37 wins, 8 defeats, and 1 draw for Ferlano. Aaron Pryor, 34 and 0 with 32 knockouts, 26 in a row. But he has had Ferlano down just once in this bout, and that was a long, long time ago, back in the first round. Well, again, Ferlano was a very, very good amateur. He's an experienced fighter. As a matter of fact, he beat Tommy Hearns, which is not a bad win, because Hearns was a great amateur. Good left hook again from Nick Ferlano. Pryor stood up between rounds in his corner, and Gil, I think you thought he was trying to psych himself. He was chanting with the crowd. That's right. Trying to wake himself up. Nailed Nicky a pretty good couple of pretty good punches then. Ferlano has not yet dropped those gloves. He's had his gloves up just like that through the duration of the fight. Well, it's up to Pryor to land some good body shots to bring those hands down and he hasn't really been doing that a lot of jabs a lot of combinations almost all to the head probably if he went to the body a little more it'd be a little easier to hit Nicky on the head three left jabs from Ferlano land 14th round in Toronto he landed a couple of pretty good punches Ferlano good right hand and a good left hook but he's being overwhelmed by the amount of punches that Aaron Pryor is throwing. Seems to me that Pryor is putting a little more snap on his punches now, Vern. You know, Ferlano has learned from Pryor in this fight. He's starting to let his punches flow four, five, six at a time, the way Aaron has been doing for the entire fight. Out of the clinch, Pryor tries the left hand, comes back with the jab, and the overhand right. Falano is a little tired right now, Vern. A little tired. Boy, somewhere back in the latter stage, oh, there's the left hook again. In the latter stages of the second round, he got his, got his sense of reality back and has fought very well since then. And is doing so now. And Pryor is talking to him. He better start punching instead of talking. We are nearing the end of the 14th round from Toronto Pryor against Ferlano. Here we all are again. Now I can say I knew you went. Picture it on Kodak Color VR Films, Kodak's sharpest, most dazzling color print films ever. We really were a hit. You know you haven't changed a bit. Looking fine as time goes by. Kodak, because time goes by. I remember hearing somebody say I was dead. I thought about Janice and Bobby, who take care of them now. He's coming back. He's all right now. I got a second chance to do all those things I meant to do. At Prudential, we know most of us don't get a second chance. Talk to a Prudential agent and get the peace of mind that comes with a piece of the rock. I did. Get a piece of the rock. Prudential Life Insurance. It was scheduled for 15. It will go into the 15th. I'm from Lundquist and Gil Clancy. We're in Toronto, Varsity Stadium. IVF Junior Welterweight Battle between the champion Aaron Pryor and 26-year-old Nick Ferlano from Toronto. First blood of the fight, uh, Vern. Aaron Pryor is bleeding from the nose. Still trying that left jab. Those of you who joined us late, one knockdown in the fight. It occurred back in the first round. Nick Ferlano, in his 46 fights, has never been knocked out. Aaron Pryor has a string of 26 consecutive knockouts. So one record will stay intact and one will not. 
In your mind, and again, considering the vagaries of judges, has Pryor established a thorough lead in this fight? Yes. In my opinion, uh, Pryor has landed the greater number of blows. He scored that big knockdown in the first round. Uh, and despite the fact that every time Falano lands a punch, the audience becomes very vocal. Pryor, in my opinion, has a comfortable lead in the fight. Nonetheless, Nick Ferlano has acquitted himself well. This is the first time that Aaron Pryor has been forced to go 15 rounds. And Vern, if I was in Pryor's corner, I'd still be worried. Anything can happen in a fight like this. Right up until that bell rings to end the fight. Pryor just got hit with a pretty good left hook then. He certainly has not overpowered Ferlano with his punching power. Aaron Pryor at 28, a native of Cincinnati. Good right. And it brought a lot of blood from Aaron Pryor's nose. That right landed by Nick Ferlano. And Ferlano dodging, bobbing, weaving, and then coming up with a left hook. Well, he looks like Aaron Pryor now, making all these unorthodox moves. Aaron just used an elbow pretty good that time to move Nicky into the ropes. He's putting the pressure on Falano now. That left hook missed from Falano, but just by about a fraction of an inch. That he, one didn't. But Falano is setting himself to punch where Aaron is just moving his hands, moving his hands, scoring the points. Nick Falano told us if it goes the distance, I win. I don't, I uh, wouldn't agree with that right now. But he has really fought well. Well, you know, Pryor looks like the loser. He's the guy that's bleeding. He's fighting in with desperation now. It is going to go the distance it appears. Yep, it has done so. And Aaron Pryor of Cincinnati runs his record to 35-0. He scored a unanimous decision over Ferlano in that fight. And that was a 